Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of VS for Build. We totally lucked out. It's not raining on me like it was supposed to yet. Knock on wood. Where's a tree when you need one? And today, we're gonna cut the rest of the body off of the 240. Stay tuned. So I'm feeling good, I'm very ready to get this done. I'm super excited, but I will say right off the bat, I have no idea how long or short this episode may be. I have a feeling it might be a little too short, but uh, the last time I cut the body off a car, I forgot to, to check my stopwatch. So we're just gonna do it, and however it ends up, it ends up, and let's have fun doing it. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is, is bring you down here, I'm gonna bring you in. As I was saying, the first thing that I'm gonna do is do some bracing. So we removed all of this good stuff, and that's gonna leave this front real wobbly when I start to cut the transmission tunnel out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut a chunk out of there and there so we can run a support bar across there and then we'll go ahead and cut the support bar to length and weld it in there, uh, giving us a nice temporary bracing. Okay, we got our first brace in here. It's welded up nicely. I might have actually overdone the welds a little bit. Only issue that I'm seeing is, is the wall thickness isn't super, super strong, so it's got a little flex to it, but, um, so I gotta be careful. I gotta just make sure that it is being used to brace the car side to side like this and, and nothing else too crazy or else it's really not gonna do its job. Now, the game plan was is I was gonna cut away some more next and then keep adding in reinforcements after I cut out, but I don't really think that's the best plan. At this point, I think I should go ahead and add in all, well, See, if I add in all the bracing, then it's gonna be very hard to cut because I'll have to work my way around all the bracing. Um, I'm gonna add one more in. It's gonna go from that spot over there across to here, and then later on, we're gonna tie into that and go from there down to frame rails down here, uh, but that's after I cut out the floorboard. So let me add one more brace in real quick. Okay, we got that second brace in there without too much trouble. I did have an unfortunate burn through on the body over there. Uh, this is a kind of new welder to me, so I'm still kind of learning the heats uh, and I accidentally burned through, but that's nothing that we can't repair. So next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is come in here on the floor pan and I'm gonna go ahead and be cutting right along this line here as clean as I can going back and I'm gonna be basically cutting out the floor pan and transmission tunnel. It's happening, it is happening. We're, we're pretty cut out already. So this is only hanging on, it's cut all the way up to here. Nice straight cut all around the side of the frame rail. I am getting excited. You can see that, that's that, that's that clean divide that I was hoping for. So we'll be able to like put a piece of angle underneath that, weld it up all nice and pretty. You barely even be able to tell it's a car cut in half. So, um, now I, I, don't, I don't know what's next. I need to do some more bracing, I think. By the looks of it, I need to brace for rain too. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna do some sort of a cross brace here, but I don't wanna waste the time to intersect the pipes. I wanna have one kinda of go overlap the other one. Since these are just temporary, we don't need to make them look pretty. Uh, but to do that, I wanna weld into these spots where the frame uh, had the support in here before, cause uh, just in case we wanna keep that looking pretty, I don't wanna weld into any of those uh, dimple die punch out holes. So what I'm gonna to need to do to get into that spot is drop the rest of this floor pan. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this cut from here uh, across there and over to there because this floor pin right now isn't supporting anything. I'll make that cut, I'll give it, get everything out of the way and then we can go ahead and weld in this cross section. floor pan is out. It looks super clean now. Look at all that room for activities. 
Now, uh, just last week you guys saw me uninstall a rear subframe the right way, and today we're gonna do it a different way, but not before we do some bracing. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the cross bracing going through there, and then I think I need to go find something that will hold the body up once I cut the rear suspension away from it. So I might need some more bracing. All right, we got the cross braces welded in here. Now after I did this, I kind of did realize why everybody puts them through each other. If these two bars aren't at least connected, what can happen is you can get a, a when that piece tries to move this way and that one tries to go this way, it'll push them apart from each other and that'll kind of do a twisting motion like this on the front, which we wouldn't want. Um, now to solve that, we could cross brace the front from here to here, but I don't, I don't have any more material. So um, lesson learned, next time I will take the time and go through each other. Uh, I just honestly didn't want to do that many coping cuts on those pipes. Uh, so it's time to get down to the dirty work. Now here's what we're gonna do. I can show you best from over here. There is a support for the rear differential right here that runs through the frame. Uh, all stuff that's gonna be cut out. It ends right about here and we've actually already cut through it on this side. So I'm gonna be following that cut, following the wheel well all the way up here, cutting along this section right here. And this is all stuff that we can spot drill out later. We're gonna go around there and then up across the, across the uh, strut tower right there, down following that line and then down around the back. The big issue with that is once we cut the suspension out of the back, there's nothing holding the body off of the ground. And I don't know how to solve that yet. I could put a little piece of metal under that little lip there and run down. I could try and punch a hole inside the middle-ish area and go up to the roof line. I don't have a lot of good reason, got a good ideas. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some jack stands underneath the back of it, and maybe that'll hold it up. Yeah, this sounds about as dumb as it is. Status update, I'm halfway through. I've cut from down there all the way up and all the way around and down to there. Uh, the main problem for me though is I haven't seen any separation yet of the body trying to peel itself away, which I really thought it'd be at least just moving around a little bit. Uh, so that's got me a little concerned, but I guess we'll find out when I cut the other half. I have done it. I have cut all the way around. Right now, technically, the body and this are no longer one piece. I have a feeling I missed some spots because it didn't just fall apart, but <coughs> I'm able to get a little bit of action through there. So next step, I'm gonna wiggle at things and anything that doesn't wiggle more than another piece that wiggles, I'm gonna cut it in half. This is so stupid. I built a Chris-sized mousetrap. I can't get the freaking subframe out of there. Oh my God, this is so dumb. Uh, I don't know how to get the rear subframe out of there. If I lift it from the back, it gets hooked on everything and presses it forward and it gets stuck. If I lift it up from the front, I end up with this and I'm afraid if I pull that out, that thing's just gonna shut on me. I feel like I earned myself a beer after that one. 
Uh, I didn't damage the back at all by doing that. I know you guys are going to be freaking out. It was fine. This thing probably weighs about 250 pounds in total, so it wasn't really that heavy. Uh, I feel like if I was like underneath the middle of it, I could just like lift it up. Um, but yeah, there's our body of the car. The It coming off actually is all really, it looks really, really good. So obviously we have this main frame rail um, here that is going to be a great mounting point to mount that into our um, two frame chassis. Uh, and then in the back here, in the back here, not knowing what I was cutting into, I did make a few accidental slices, but nothing that we can't stitch well back up and then cover. So you can see that, how it's got a little extra lip there and it kind of comes all the way around. What we'll do with that is we'll go ahead and um, cut it all off flush, sand it down so it's real nice, weld the seam all the way around so it's got that nice reinforcement there, weld it all the way around, and then we'll do flat bar back over it all so it's like a nice finished look when it's all done so obviously in the end i don't want this chassis to look like it was cut or i don't want the body to look like it was cut off of something and then that's great all that flat bar that we put in there is great mounting points to mount again to the tube frame chassis so it's all coming together in the middle we're going to have a fuel cell and you know and then we'll have floor pan and stuff like that so there's other things but yeah that's that's kind of the idea it's fantastic i'm super happy about this and how this happened it's not too heavy, it looks good. Not too much rust repair needed, just this one spot right here. Slam dunk. Wow, that guy made it really close to being a really bad day. I can't cut these things and leave them here. This was sitting right like that, and I stepped on it, and I was like, oh, did I step on a screw? It didn't quite get me, but damn, that was close. Not a good way to end the day. All right, guys, back home. I'm probably just going to do a little bit of Twitch streaming tonight. Call it an early night. I'm on there at twitch.tv slash beast for build if you want to come join. We'll probably just talk cars and buy parts of the 370Z and do a little bit of gaming here or there. Um, as far as the schedule goes, the schedule is going to be uh, changed up a little bit. Over the next week, I'm going to stick to uh, every day of the week. I'm trying to have an episode Monday through Friday, and then I'm taking the weekends off. That's kind of been the pattern. I love it. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it too. Uh, we do have to shoot some footage uh, that is going to be aired at a later date, which means we are going to have to take a couple days off in the middle of the weeks here and there uh, coming up. So uh, I'm just going to loosen it up a little bit and we'll kind of see how it goes. I, I don't want it to turn back into three ep only three episodes a week, uh, but it might for a little bit. So hang in there with me. Just believe that why the reasons why I'm doing this are definitely worth it for the channel and, and for my own just getting the work done. Uh, when you do an episode like every other day, it means it's one less day of editing, which is like four more hours a day that you can be spending in the shop, which is it's just pretty awesome. But I like doing the dailies. I really like doing the dailies. Everybody likes doing the dailies. My mom was like, if you don't do daily episodes, I'll, I'll forget to watch. <laughs> Come on, mom. <laughs> So I'm trying to stick to it, guys. That's that's that. Uh, if you want to help out and support, beastforbuild.com. Find us there or follow us on Instagram, beastforbuild on there. Also, I've been wanting to mention, I've been wanting to mention, let's try this out, guys. If you want to support and you, do, you don't want to buy anything, you don't want to interact with our sponsors or whatever, um, try this. Don't skip through the videos. So I'm trying to make the videos as, as kind of compressed and concise as I can, l as little rambling and stuff as I can. I'm trying to keep them as entertaining as possible between like, 11 12 15 minutes is my my goal to hit on all these on these videos youtube calculates whether or not a channel is good basically and whether they're going to share it around with other people and etc etc by an analytic called watch time and that basically means you know the percentage of the video you actually watch so when you skip through the video it looks bad on the channel if you watch the video all the way through it looks really good on the channel uh, the people that i know that have extremely successful automotive channels and really fast growth they all have a very very high watch percentage so if you want to help out and try and support don't skip through the videos and let's see what happens all right, guys, other than that, tomorrow I'm getting to work on those uh, rear subframe mounts. Once we get the subframe bolted in, we'll know where our rear wheels go. Then we can suspend the, the body from the ceiling and lower it down and see where that's going to go. And then we can figure out where the engine and the suspension goes in the front. It's going to be fantastic. Moving forward, it'll start to look like a car by the end of like next week, I think. All right, guys, I will see you then. I'll see you tomorrow. Please remember to like and subscribe. That's the thing I used to say. Peace! Come, come.